conform into your image. Thank you, Lord, for what you do tonight by your spirit, through your word and hearts and lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Philippians chapter 3, if you will, beginning in the 8th verse. He said, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dumb, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after that which I may apprehend, for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Now, as we've been sharing with you this 10th verse from the Amplified Version, and then going back and looking at the 8th verse also from the Amplified Version, we see some things here that, are, that, are, that just really help us, I believe. And, uh, and that is, you see Paul's determined purpose. It was something that was, it was, it was a purpose that he had, an intention, an aim, a goal. You know, if you aim for nothing, you'll always get it. You have to aim for something, amen, in life to, uh, to uh, you know, to go forward, to make progress. You have to have a goal. And what we're going to talk a little bit today about goals, you need to have goals in your life. And, of course, this was the greatest goal anyone has ever made, and it's the one that everyone should make. And I trust that you, if you haven't made it, you will make this your goal to progressively know Jesus Christ more closely, deeply, and intimately from now until Jesus comes. Now, that's a good New Year's resolution, but if it ends in 2014, then you're still way short. You will not have arrived. You will not have attained. You will not have apprehended, as Paul said, all that you should have and could have. So again, he said, my determined purpose. If you're not determined, it's not going to happen. I said, if you're not determined, it's not going to happen. That's where we have that firmly fixed Resolute, amen, mind-made-up attitude. Praise God. You ever got your mind made up about something and nothing or nobody can stop you? <coughs> or we, we use that word resolution, you know, and uh, it basically comes from this, having a determined, firmly fixed, or resolute decision that you make. And, of course, uh, you know, it's just a joke to most, most people, you know, uh, but I'm here to say there is a, re a resolution that we all should make could make, should make, and it should be from now until Jesus comes, not just for a new year. Amen? And so listen to me today as I share this with you again. We're going to review some, but we're going to move into some other things that we haven't gotten into, uh, hopefully, if we have time. Again, we, we covered that word resolution a little bit more. It's a firm decision also, and uh, it's uh, a firm decision with a decided upon course of action. Amen. You also decide upon a course of action. How am I going to, you know, obtain this, attain to this goal? How am I going to reach this goal? What am I going to do uh, in the process? As he said here uh, in the Amplified Version, that he had a determined purpose to become progressively, progressively, day by day, step by step, more and more acquainted with Christ, that he might know him more deeply, more closely, more deeply, more intimately than ever before, perceiving and recognizing and understanding him and the wonders of his person more clearly and more strongly. Jesus is the most wonderful person that's ever lived on the face of the earth. 
And uh, we know him as Savior, but then knowing him as Savior just gets us to heaven, basically. Remitted our sins and born into the family of God and on our way to heaven. And you can live your whole life and not really know him. Not know your Lord and Savior. Not know your Redeemer. Not know the one who paid the price for you to miss hell and gain heaven and to be a part of the family of God. I mean, you can be a part of a family as far as that goes, even naturally on the earth. Uh, there's a lot of people, you know, uh, you know, in, in, in some families, children that don't really know their fathers, children that don't really know their mothers, and uh, in the natural, I mean, even when they live in the same house with them. Are you listening to me? Because they don't ever spend any time communicating with them, fellowshipping with them. They don't spend any quality time with them, you know, uh, listening to what they have to say, learning about them, getting to know them. And so this is what we're talking about here. And of course, we should know our Father, Heavenly Father. We should know our Lord Jesus Christ closely and deeply and intimately. I like what he said also in the Amplified Version in verse 8, where he said, in the King James it says this way, I count all things but dumb. In other words, I count everything just as, as dumb or manure, manure or <laughs> waste or just mere dregs, I think the Amplified says, I count everything as, as waste, as nothing, in comparison to the priceless privilege. Hallelujah. The overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth, and the supreme advantage of knowing Christ, the anointed one, and the anointing. And when we talked about this Sunday, we mentioned this, that if we will have this same determined purpose that the Apostle Paul had, or you can call it a resolution if you want to, the same determined purpose that he had to know Christ, progressively know Christ more closely and deeply and intimately than we do now, uh, then when we have that same purpose, amen, if we have that same purpose, we're, we, we are going to see and understand and know, praise God, that, 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 that this will change every, everything that concerns us, everything in our life for the better. When we know him more closely, deeply, and intimately, it will change every relationship you have, especially those close and deep and intimate relationships you have with a husband, with a wife, with, with parents, with children. Those relationships will get so much better the more you know Jesus, the more closely and deeply and intimately you are with Jesus Christ, the better every other relationship you have will be. At the same time, it will benefit and bless and cause every area of your life to be better than it is now, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially, and otherwise. So why wouldn't we do this anyway? I mean, you're going to benefit greatly from it, but the greatest benefit of it all is just knowing Him. Just knowing Him. Praise God. Just leave all the rest of it off. It, because none of that really, you know, like I say, it's all just, it's all just uh, waste. It's all nothing in comparison just to knowing Him. But the thing about it is, when you get to know Him, you know, he, you get all that with it. Amen. Praise God. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and He'll just add all these other things to you. Amen. Because love gives. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son. Jesus so loved the world, He gave His life. And, uh, and he's and he just going to give and give and keep on giving. And the closer you get to him, the more he's just going to heap on you. Amen. Just, that's, just his, that's just his nature. Amen. That's just the nature of, of love. That's just the nature of love. It gives and gives and keeps on giving. He'll never outgive God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, we use the verse of Scripture. And uh, in, in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24, you can turn there if you want to. But basically... You know, it says, don't let the, the wise man boast in, in his wisdom, or the rich man in his riches, or the mighty man in his might. But, uh, you know, let you know him boast that understandeth and knoweth God. Because that's a really the only thing worth boasting about, is understanding and knowing God, or understanding, as we're talking about, and knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to move into this a little bit more quickly so that we can maybe get a little further than we've already been in this study on Sunday. But down here in the, in the uh, and we're going back to the King James Version here, in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13, he says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, 
but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So again, if we have this determined purpose, if we have this determined purpose to progressively know Christ more closely and deeply and intimately, then we need a course of action. And you can have various courses of action. I mean, you can, you, you know, you can let the Spirit of God design one just for you. Amen? Everybody's different. And everybody uh, has different work schedules nowadays and, and different times that they can spend time with the Lord. You can't just set it a certain time and it fit everybody's schedule and fit everybody's life. But you need a, uh, you know, a, uh, you need a, a goal and then you need, like we said there, uh, a set goal and a determined uh, purpose with a course of action. With a course of action. And uh, therefore, I'm, I'm doing something a little different. I'll just share it with you. Doing something a little different. don't know that I've ever done this before. In fact, I'm sure I've never done this exactly this way before. But I started out this year with a book uh, of Kenneth Copeland's. It's a, a personal, it's a devotion book by Kenneth Copeland called Pursuit of His Presence. And in this book, uh, you know, you, you have a, a certain lesson that you read there that he shares for that particular day, a certain devotion. And then connected with it are different scriptures that you can meditate on throughout that day. But also you have the verses there beginning in Genesis and in Matthew. And it will, it will uh, enable you to read through the entire Bible in a year. And of course you can read through the Bible a lot quicker than a year. Amen. Amen. But you know there's a lot of people that live for 30 years and still never read through the Bible. Excuse me. Amen. Lots of people have lived their whole life and never read through the Bible. So if you're not going to sit down and just read through it, get you a plan. If you don't get a plan, you probably never will read through it. And because it's, a, you know, it's, it's a pretty thick book. But again, you read a lot of books, this maybe, probably read a lot of books this thick before. But read the Bible. Amen? And if, you, if, it, if it takes you a year, well, that's all right. Better not read it at all. Y'all still here? You're going home. Amen. Amen. Better than never ever reading it. And so I'm reading through it in a year. A lot, and, and I may finish before then, but I'm gonna I'm gonna read through it in a year. I'm gonna meditate other scriptures that are with that particular devotion every day. And then I have my own scriptures that I read and study and meditate every day. I meditate hidden scriptures every day. I meditate in different areas, I meditate the word of God every day. And uh, you know, that's just one way, not the only way. One way. To come closer to the Lord. Now we mentioned this. If you're going to get closer to the Lord, it's never going to happen if you don't read the Bible. Amen. Amen. It's never going to happen if you do not read the Bible, and not only read, if you do not study, study. if you do not meditate upon it, Amen. meditate upon it, meditate upon it. That's really like you know chewing it up and digesting it. Amen. Really getting everything out of it that you can. When you take a verse of scripture and you just ponder it. You know, you, you, you begin to mutter it. You begin to speak it to yourself. You say it over and over again. And in the process, you probably memorize it. But you're not doing it to memorize it. You're doing it to digest it. You're doing it to get it, to, your mind renewed with it and get it down into your heart. And see, that's a verse of Scripture I want to look at today. Uh, I want to cover three things here real quickly that we covered already. If you're going to have a, uh, you know, a course of action so that you know, progressively know Jesus Christ more closely, deeply, and intimately. The Apostle Paul used three, three things here that are very important. Forget it. You're going to have to forget anything and everything that will hinder you, hold you back, prevent you, distract you, stay in your way, you know, heap guilt and condemnation on you, pull you down, cause it to be uh, impossible for you to go forward and grow in grace and knowledge and grow closer to the Lord, uh, you need to forget about it. And a big part of that is forgiving. Forgiving. Forgiving people for anything they've said and done to you. Forgiving and forgetting. But not only that, forgiving your heart, forgetting your heartaches, your disappointments, your failures, your mistakes, uh, the things in the past uh, that, have, uh, that were, that were uh, heartbreaking things to you that caused you much heartache and pain and disappointment and grief, you have to get past them. If you're going to go forward, if you're going to go on with the Lord, you can't just, you just can't live in the past. 
and you certainly can't live with guilt and condemnation. And you certainly can't live, the, you know, with grief and sorrow and heartache and pain all your life. You know, the, you, you, the, the time comes where you have to be healed and you have to forgive and you have to forget and you have to go on. Amen. And you have to come to the place that you can stop. You know, just camping out where you are all your life and, and reach for other things that are before you. Amen. He's got good things in store for every one of us. Amen. Good things, great things, wonderful things. I know, he said, the thoughts and the plans that I have for you and the future that I have for you. It's not evil, it's good. Hallelujah. It's filled with peace. It's wonderful. Glory to God. But we're going to have to reach for it or we'll never arrive there. And if the same thing holds true with knowing Jesus Christ more closely and deeply and intimately, if there's anything the enemy would like to do, and, his, and, and if anybody does have a plan and a purpose to keep you from knowing Jesus Christ, it is the devil. Amen. And the powers and principalities and rulers of the darkness and the wicked spirits that know that once you know Jesus Christ closely and deeply and intimately, you will tread them underfoot every day of your life. You'll walk in total, complete, absolute victory, peace that passeth understanding, joy unspeakable and full of glory. You'll be blessed in the Lord. You'll be productive. You'll bear fruit. Praise God, you'll be like Jesus, think like Jesus, talk like Jesus, walk like Jesus, live like Jesus. And the enemy, if it's he can ever, if, if, if there's any plan or purpose he has, is to prevent that in your life. Are you listening to me? And then, of course, your own flesh will work against you. Your own mind will work against you. Your own emotions will work against you. If you do not start out, first and foremost, getting into the Word of God and renewing your mind with the Word of God renewing your mind with the Word of God, filling your heart with the Word of God. And a, that will enable you to forgive. That will enable you to forget to, uh, and, and put things behind you and go on. But it will also enable you supernaturally to reach forth under the things which are before you, to have a vision, to have a dream, to have a goal. And, and, and the Apostle Paul had the number one goal here to know Jesus Christ more closely and deeply and intimately. And if we're going to know him that way, we're going to have to, like I said, have a determined purpose. And we're going to have to have a plan of action. How am I going to know this Jesus that saved me, amen, uh, from my sins, amen, washed me in his blood, caused me to be born of his spirit, be a child of God, be a part of the family of God. How am I going to know him more closely and deeply and intimately? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And that Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. You'll never know him closely and deeply and intimately until you spend some time reading, studying, meditating, hearing, understanding and obeying the Word of God. Are you listening to me? Praise God. Amen. You know, your Bible should be the most important book in your life. And it should take, you should spend more time reading, studying, and meditating this book than you do watching television, Amen. listening to the radio, Amen. or CDs, or cassettes, or reading somebody else's material. Amen. Amen. Who do you want to know? I said, who do you want to know? Do you want to know the author of this book or do you want to know the author of some other book? Amen? Do you, want to, do you want to know Jesus or do you want to know something else or somebody else? Or, and most of those other things are not going to benefit you one little bit. Amen? Excuse me. I still love you. Amen. Praise God. I hope you still love me. Glory to God. Let me go ahead and say this. He said, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before, pressing toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. You will, you will have to reach for it. You will even have to press toward it. That means a, you will have to put forth some effort. You will have to use some, have some determination. You will have to use some discipline. Are you listening to me? A, a, a disciple really is a disciplined follower of Jesus Christ. They have disciplined themselves to hear and you know, his sayings, to obey his sayings. And in our case, to read, to study, to meditate his word and do what it says. I want to go, I want you to go with me. I've quoted it already, but anyway, let's go over there and read it. Romans chapter 12. I, I, I'm still convinced this is the greatest, most important scripture for any uh, person when they first are born again, other than being filled with the Spirit of God right after they're born again or at the same time that they're born again. To be filled with the Spirit is to do this right here. 
And the Apostle Paul felt very strongly about it. And the Holy Ghost did through the Apostle Paul. said, I beseech you. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that means sisters too, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now notice what he said here. First of all, he's talking about presenting your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. Presenting your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. And he said it's your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Don't think like the world, talk like the world, act like the world. And don't uh, uh, allow your body to do and your flesh to do everything the world does. Amen. And he says the way we do this as we go on, be not conformed to the world, is be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Be transformed by the renewing of our mind that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, I, I, I'm just going to meddle a little bit here. Is that all right? Yeah. Get off on a rabbit trail. Yeah. You know, I hear people say to me all the time, well, you know, I just can't do that. You know, I just, I just can't find an hour a day for the Word. I just can't find an hour to pray. I'm convinced that, you know, you can find a lot more than that if you wanted to. Amen. Amen. That it simply, simply, I'm convinced we need a time to pray and a place to pray. Amen. I'm convinced we need a time to study and a place to study. Amen. And you can put them together if you want to. Amen. And one before the other, however you want to do it. But I'm convinced you can have a time to pray and a place to pray. You can have a time to study and a place to study. If you don't, then you probably won't. But at the same time, you can. Amen. Now, a lot of people tell me, well, I, I just can't get up an hour early before I go to work, or I just can't stay up an hour later, or I can't find any time in the middle of the day. Basically, what they're saying is I don't want to. Excuse that's me. It. But that's what they're saying. That's it. Are you listening Amen. to me? Anything, anything. It doesn't matter what it is. You know, Jesus said, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. First of all, we got his word for it. We can do it. And certainly we can do this. The thing is, we don't want to. And then, and, and then even if we want to, you're going to have to have more than just a little want to. Because there's an enemy arrayed against you. And like I said already, your unrenewed mind, your flesh, and the devil, uh, all are going to, in your emotions, are going to fight you in this particular area. So if you do not have a determined purpose, and if you do not have a course of action, you're never going to grow very much in Christ because there are going to be all kinds of distractions and hindrances and the enemy will see to it that they are. And you have to be determined that you're, that, that, that you're going to, that day by day, step by step, progressively, more and more, become more closely, deeply, and intimate with Christ. And you're going to have to have that aim, that interest, that purpose, that that consuming desire, amen, that desire that, that consists of a strong will to have it, that refuses to settle for anything less, and then you're going to have to have that, that course of action and stick to it, amen. You're going to have to hear what he says and do it, amen, and then stick to it. Whatever he says to you, do it and stick to it. You're going to have to be faithful. You're going to have to be committed to it. And, or it never will happen. There will always be something that will rob you of it, that will keep you from it. There will always be something that will take its place. But the fact of the matter is this. I found it out over 40, 30 years of pastoring is that people do what they want to do. Excuse me. People do what they want to do. The Apostle Paul wanted to do this. I said he wanted it. He wanted it more than anything else. He considered it the most important thing in his life and everything else that he could gain in life as waste in comparison to it. He wanted it. Now, if you want it, you can have it. If you want it, you can do it. Uh, if you don't, amen, then just quit saying, I don't have time. I can't find time. I can't do it because you can do it. You do have time. You can find time. You're just putting something else in that time frame. Amen. Been there, done that. I'm preaching to my, I preach to myself while I'm preaching this. Amen. I've been there. Amen. I can remember, and, and you know, I wouldn't want this to happen to anybody. But I came to a place after I'd been a Christian for for um, a number of years. Let's see, uh, from '71 to '74, uh, I'd been a Christian a few years. And when my son was born, and they said he couldn't live, I got pretty desperate. I got pretty desperate, and I determined 
that I was going to get into the Word of God and I was going to pray and I was going to seek God and I was going to have faith for my son to live and not die. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? I was going to, I, I, I was just not going to lay down and let that happen. I was just not going to give up. I was just not going to just say, well, whatever the doctor says, you know, I got to, I, I was desperate and I became determined. But you don't have to wait till you get desperate. I mean, you can just have a desire. You can just have a desire. You're born of the Spirit of God. You're a child of God. Just, uh, you just need to create an appetite, maybe, I, I guess. And uh, in your heart sometimes, in your life sometimes, a, a desire, an appetite, stirred up, stirred up, created. I heard one person say one time, your, your, your appetite, you know, uh, is stronger and uh, greater in the areas that, whichever area you feed the most. You can feed your flesh or you can feed your spirit. And so if you want, to, if you want your spiritual appetite to grow, you're going to have to start feeding it. Amen? I said start feeding it. And it'll, 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 it'll develop an appetite, a desire, a longing for, a yearning for. You know, uh, just, and, and you, you just got to have it. I mean, if, when you got a, when you got an appetite for something, and not only an appetite, but a hunger. <laughs> Amen. You can develop a hunger to where, just like when you, th you think, I've got to eat. You know, I, I just got to eat. I'm hungry. Amen. i got to eat, and i got to eat now. Well, you can get that way with the Word. You can get that way with the Word. Now, some people are looking at me funny right now, but you, you can get that way with the Word. You can get that place where you wake up in the morning and you're hungry, and the thing you're hungry for more than a, more than a, uh, you know, a pancake or more than bacon and eggs is the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Really? Isn't that right? I got, I got some amens here. You can get a hunger so that the first thing when you get up in the morning that you want more than anything else is spend some time with the Lord. Amen. It's some time in the Word. It's some time in prayer. some time worshiping God and praising God. But you have to develop those things. <coughs> Glory to God. I'm kind of going several directions here tonight instead of staying, uh, you know, in, in this, in the same thing that I started with. But anyway, you know, just talking about, I told you I was going to meddle a little while, so let me just meddle. Now, if, if you say, I can't do something, like I said, for the most part, you're saying, you know, when it concerns spiritual things and things the Lord said you can do, you're basically saying, I don't want to. Amen. I don't want to. And, and, and there's a lot of people that say that about different things. You could, maybe I ought to ask you, what is it you think you can't do? Or maybe I ought to ask you, what does many people say they can't do? And uh, there's a lot of different things. That, there's people tell me all the time, I can't fast. You know, I, I, I might be on a fast, and I've been fasting a few days, or I've met some people after I've been on an extended fast and been fasted you know, 20, 30 days or something. And they looked at me like, no, no, you, you didn't do that. I know you didn't do that. That's not possible to do that. And I said, well, why is it not? And I said, the Lord did it and Moses did it. And I see it all through the Bible. And I said, and, you know, he told us to do it. Why can't we do it? Oh, I can't do it. I said, they said, I can't do it. I can't do it. You ever, you ever heard me say, I can't fast. I said, I just, I can't do it. Well, all you have to do I mean, you get up and, and, and eat a meal one, two, three times a day. All you have to do is get up and not eat that meal. One meal at a time. Don't look at it like 30 days, 20 days, three days. Just look at it one meal at a time. Amen. Just look at it like one meal at a time. Now, if I told you fast three days, you might, you know, so to that person that never has fasted, they might faint. But if I said, just fast the meal, Oh, okay. All right. I'll do that for the Lord. And then, then after that, I was like, well, fast another one. You can do it. You fasted that one. You fast this one. And the next thing you know, they fasted three meals and six meals and nine meals and three days was gone. Hallelujah. Amen. There are people say this about a lot of things. Usually it's about a habit to have. A bad habit to have. Now it could be smoking, drinking, cussing. <laughs> I used to be a world champion cusser. I'm not proud of it. I'm just telling you. I, I, I just cussed and didn't think I could quit cussing. I, I tried not to. I tried to quit cussing. Failed miserably in myself. But when I got saved, I found out I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Praise God because uh, he supernaturally enabled me to quit cussing. Amen. But I had to, you know, I had tried and tried and tried. You have to try to do some things. And not only try, you have to be determined about some things. 
Hey man, just like a person, maybe a person, if it, it, you know, you, you see it all the time, a person said, well, I can't quit smoking. But they can. Amen. I said they can. If they want to, they can. And if they say, basically, you know, I have a guy, a cousin of mine that uh, one time he was struggling financially. I really didn't start admitting that. Y'all just got to forgive me. I was really, uh, he was struggling financially. He was always coming to me and borrowing money and coming to me and borrowing money. And, and usually he wasn't borrowing. I was just giving it. Anyway, he was getting money from me and getting money from me and getting money from me. And finally one day I said, now, you got a good job. You're making actually more money than I'm making. You have less payments as far as the house and the car payment than I got. I said, I don't quite understand why you can't make your payments. And why you're always coming to me for money, and I, I have less money, and I have you know bigger house payment, and bigger car payments. Why? And then we looked at a couple of things, and we discovered that he was dipping, and he was smoking. Are you listening to me? We sat down and figured it out. Before we figured it out, we done talk. We, we, I mean, by the time we figured it out, there was this car payment, part of his house payment. Excuse me. There it was, and he said, "Wow, I didn't realize that." I never saw that before. I never thought. I never dreamed that. I don't know why he didn't. But then I said, you know, he said, but you know, I just can't quit. I said, yeah, you can. He said, no, I can't. I said, yeah, you can. He said, no, I can't. I've tried and I've tried and I've tried. I said, yes, you can. I said, basically, all you have to do, you know, basically, when you started a bad habit, most of them, especially smoking or drinking, Maybe none of y'all have ever done either one of them. I did both. I smoked some. Never did develop a habit, but I smoked some when I first started smoking. I'd take a draw of that cigarette. <coughs> 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 oh, God! Ugh. Are you? That's what I did. And it took me a while, you know, before I could, you know, <laughs> smoke it and inhale it and, and, and develop that habit. What I did was I developed a habit. And I had to be... I would have had to been determined to do it, or I wouldn't have done it. Now, I didn't develop the habit of smoking, but anybody that develops a habit of smoking, they have to be determined to do it, because they have to overcome some, you know, eyes that smoke in your eyes, smoke in your lungs, and coughing and spitting. And let me just use drinking. Anybody ever took a drink? My dad used to drink alcohol, hide it, and I'd go get it and take a swig. And when I did, he'd know it, because I said, <coughs> And then, are you, I, I, I would be able to say, I can't smoke. I can't drink because that's, that's too hard. But, you know, if you pick up those habits, and do, you didn't just pick them up. You developed them. I said, are you listening to me? You had to overcome the, all the, uh, you know, the bad, what do you call it? Side effects. Side effects, consequences, all the negative effects of either one of the, those habits. I mean, even coffee. I don't drink coffee. Now, maybe, maybe everybody here does. I have drank some. I've drank probably more recently than I have in my whole life. But I've always said, if coffee tastes as good as it smells, I drink it. <coughs> but it just don't. And it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. And then with me, I have to run the restroom three or four times a day. It just ain't worth it. So I, I told you I was going to quit preaching and go to meddling here. But the thing I'm getting to here is this. If you want to, you can. And then after you decide you want to, you have to have a determined uh, action that you're going to take. And basically just one at a time. One, 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 cigarette at a time. one cigarette at a time. One drink at a time. One cup of coffee at a time. Whatever it is. Or if it's fasting, you know, whatever. One, one, one at a time. And just basically, even though it causes you some. Uh, withdrawal pains or causes you a little bit of discomfort or whatever that you have to because you missed a, a, a cigarette or a cup of coffee or, or a drink. I trust that none of you drank it, but anyway, if you, if you have any habit, just one at a time and just overcome that that uh, negative effects of missing it one at a time. And the next thing you know, 
you've developed a good habit. Yeah. You've broken a bad one, you've developed a good one. And I've got good news for you. God never did help you develop a bad one, but he will supernaturally help you get rid of the bad one. Amen? And develop a good one. I said supernaturally. I said supernaturally. Woo! I said supernaturally. Yeah. Yes. If you make a decision, if you have a determined purpose, if you do your part, if you do what you can do, God will enable you supernaturally and do what you to do what you couldn't do yourself. Amen. By his spirit, through his word. Now I don't know how I got off on all that. I don't know why I got off on all that. But I'm here just to simply say we can come clo more closely, deeply, and intimately with Christ. Uh, have, uh, you know, in our relationship. But if we don't want to, it'll never happen. And if we're not determined, that if it'll, it'll never happen. If we do not have a course of action, if we do not, if we do not do something day by day, step by step, faithfully, consistently, have that word time every morning or every night or both. Amen. The Spirit of God been dealing with me, uh, you know, and I've done this uh, in the past, but here recently. Seems like I got away from it, and the Lord just started dealing with me about day and night, day and night, day and night. And he hadn't let me off of it, day and night, day and night. Meditate the Word of God day and night. Read and study day and night. Pray day and night. Amen. Now, sometimes people just do it in the day. Sometimes people just do it at night. But, you know, I, I, there's scripture on doing it day and night. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And it'll make all the difference in the world in your life. Well, I didn't get anywhere... Uh, close to where I thought I was going with this tonight. But again, we mentioned these things and we we'll mentioned to you in closing here tonight. If you're going to get close, deep, intimately acquainted with Jesus Christ, day by day, step by step, it's going to take time in the Word of God. You can have some time reading time, you can have some studying time, and you find the scripture that you need the most. And if you got a bad habit, just pick one that replies to that and meditate it, and you'll get rid of your bad habits. Hallelujah, and develop some good habits in the process. Are you listening to me? So spend that time every day in the Word and every day in prayer. Spend some time just talking, just communing, just fellowshipping. Go to another whole level after you've talked with Him a while. Fellowship with Him, share with Him, start thanking Him, praising Him, worship Him. And then go to another level and worship Him and worship Him. Just love Him and worship Him. Tell Him out. Uh, worship him in spirit, worship him in truth, worship him with a word, worship him out of your spirit. In other, in other tongues, the spirit of God gives you utterance. Amen. And you'll find that you'll begin to be more closely and deeply and intimately acquainted with Christ. And then spend some time uh, being sensitive to the spirit, just listening, hearing, obeying, following the, following the Holy Spirit, letting him teach you, letting him show you things to come. Let him lead you and guide you and direct you. Let him receive from Jesus and reveal things to you. Reveal Jesus to you in, a, in a, you know, one of these um, uh, wonders of his person. One of these different wonders of his person. Let the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. And that, that, a lot of that will happen praying in the Spirit and listening. Just listening. You know, sometimes people uh, just don't ever get quiet. Just don't ever get quiet. We're, we're just too busy. All of us are just too busy in the business of life. And we just go from we can to can, from daylight to bedtime. And we lay our head down, and then you're too tired to get anything from the Lord. You go to sleep, and you miss everything. But if you pray and get still and get quiet and get in the presence of God, be surprised how much you can hear. You'd be surprised how clear you can hear. You'd be surprised how much it'll change you from glory to glory into His image. Make you more like Him. Hallelujah, every day of your life. Hallelujah, it's precious. Amen. Let me go back and read that eighth verse and amplify it again. I'll close with this. I count everything else. And this is really what we have to do. We have to count everything else that we can gain in life as dumb. That's the worst thing that it is. Waste. And compared to the priceless privilege 
their overwhelming preciousness, their surpassing worth, and the supreme advantage of knowing Christ, the anointed one. I wanted to spend some more time on this part of it, but we, we just didn't get there. And that is, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God is love. We need to go through the scriptures and find, you know, 1 Corinthians 13 and some other scriptures where it talks about the love of God and the love of Christ, the God kind of love, his, his unconditional love, his love that he has for us. And we need to spend time reading and studying and meditating and practicing that love and find, we'll find that, that we begin to know Christ, know him because he's love. Know his nature. Know his character. Know exactly how he is, what he thinks, what he would say, what he would do in every situation. It's based on, of course, the word. It's also based on love. What would love think? What would love say? What would love do? How would, how would love respond? The next thing you know, you begin to know Jesus Christ in a closer, deeper, intimate way because he is love. And the love of God, you have to understand, first of all, from the word of God, what the God kind of love is <coughs> because people are so goofed up and messed up about love. Most people, especially uh, people that are not Christians, confuse lust for love. They, they're so messed up. They don't know what love is. They confuse even just natural affection for love. They confuse things because they don't know the truth. They don't know the word. They don't know love. And of course, again, if you don't spend much time praying in the Spirit, the love of God shed around your heart by the Holy Ghost, it'll bubble, bubble up in you and dwell in, in, in and just kind of fill you up to overflowing, and the next thing you know, you find yourself being able to love unlovely and ungodly people and people that hate you and persecute you and say everything bad about you because you're just so full of the Spirit and so full of love. And when you do those things, and you don't even know how could I do that? I never acted that way before. I, I mean, normally I would have slapped them. You know, normally I would have cussed them out. I gave them a piece of my mind. Now, I just forgive them, and I just love them, and I just pray for them. And then you find yourself changing. You find yourself, what, what, what are you doing in that process of changing, though, is, is knowing Jesus Christ. Knowing Him closely and deeply and intimately. And when you know Him, you become like Him. The better you know Him, the more you become like Him. God bless you. Hallelujah. We love you. We're going to.